Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, our project is about predicting user ratings by learning from historical reviews. So um, agenda for today, our motivation first, and then data set, our methods, and then our results. So the question we're going to answer is that if I've never been to a restaurant, am I able to sort of know in advance if I like this place or not? Fortunately, we have um, a lot of information on the review website like Yelp, which we can exploit. So we want to sort of do this prediction using all the historical readings and reviews that are available to us. Uh, our data is from Yelp Data Challenge. Uh, we try to limit our um, uh, analysis only to the Pittsburgh businesses due to limited computing resources. So um, basically we have over 60,000 uh, reviews in total. Uh, we implemented two uh, types of methods. Uh, first one is collaborative filtering, which you guys should be quite familiar with. Basically, I'm trying to find all the, um, some other people who are similar to me and try to inform my preference based on their opinions. So here it's um, something like that. Um, we have two similarity measures. Uh, the first one is Euclidean distance-based similarity, and the second one is cosine similarity. Um, there is uh, this Pearson coefficient, which is popular, but it does not apply in our case because we have too many cases where I and the collaborator only have one restaurant, only go to one restaurant in common, so the math won't actually work. Um, the second um, method we have here is called hidden factors as topics or HFT in short, uh, proposed by Macaulay and uh, Leskovic. So the basic idea is that a large part of the rating actually come from my preference over some hidden aspects, um, some hidden aspects, and the restaurant's proper, uh, properties based on the same aspects. So which is the interaction term here that you see. But at the same time, um, like normally we would do this based on numeric ratings only, but these aspects are also sort of encoded in the text reviews. So we can sort of um, discover those used, uh, using uh, um, topic analysis and the uh, preferences and the um, preferences and the properties are actually the topic distribution here. So in this way, we sort of combine the information from the numeric ratings as well as the text reviews into this uh, objective function that you see. And we try to optimize it um, by iteratively running all the, uh, these two steps. Uh, we try to minimize it and then we try to sample it and like, um, keep going until converge. So um, for details, you can refer to the, uh, their, um, their paper. Um, this is just a high level overview of it. So um, here are some of the topics that we extracted from the, from the data. So you can basically see that some of these are quite interpretable, but it's not always the case. It doesn't have to be. So results, first of all, we try to compare uh, what if we change the number of topics um, using the HFT model. So we kind of see this huge improvement when we increase the topic, number of topics from five to 10, but then only a marginal imp uh, improvement when, it, when we further increase to 15. And then we try to pick this uh, best performing HFT model and try to compare it with um, the CF models. Um, here we first have two um, sort of benchmarks uh, first one is average user rating, and second one is average business rating. And you can sort of see that average business rating performs really exceptionally well. Our two CF models beats the first uh, benchmark, but not the second one. And here, the HFT model actually performs the best, but it's only marginally better than the average business rating. So we were kind of thinking that if it's so important, why can't we just base our uh, prediction on the uh, average business rating and only try to predict the uh, deviation from it, which is why we try to normalize the data and now we found out that our CF model performs better than both our benchmarks. So the TAs are right about homework, always normalize the data before analyzing it. Um, yeah, that's all. Okay. Hope you find it interesting, thank you.